Put them up. Characters. Joe Smith, uninteresting, wimpy. 23. Brett, cool, calm, collected. 30. Pauline. Grumpy, easily annoyed, hairdresser, 54. Policeman, hardworking, dedicated, just there to do his job, 43. Setting, a small bank where Brett is currently the only employee on shift. At rise, Joe is standing outside of the bank while Pauline is inside reading a magazine and Brett is busying himself with papers at his desk. All right, Joe, just take a deep breath, you can do this. Joe closes his eyes and lets out a long breath. He pulls a classic robber mask out of his back pocket and puts it on. Then he pulls out a gun out of his back pocket, turns towards the door and kicks it in. Brett, whose back was turned to the door, is startled and throws the papers he's holding up into the air. Put your hands up! This is a, this is a robbery! <laughs> Whoa there, buddy, you scared the crap out of me! <laughs> you just... Come barging in like that. Look what you made me do. Gestures to the paper on the floor. Not cool, bro. <laughs> Give me all your money. I'm not afraid to shoot. Brett starts to pick up the papers. Listen, man, you don't need to shout. I'm standing right here. You have a bank card? Starts to lower gun. Well, well no, I'm, I'm a robber. I'm, I'm a robber, and I'm robbing this joint. Well, you're not doing a very good job at it now, are you? To Pauline. Yeah, tell me about it. To Joe. You don't even have a real gun. Are, are you sure? could have sworn this thing was real. I have seen quite a few bank robberies in my time, hot shot. Enough robberies to know what a real gun is. Points to Joe's gun. And what isn't? Well, I'm not leaving without the money I came for. Mockingly. And how much money is that? <laughs> All of it, I guess. I can give you the three bucks that's in my pocket, but that's all I'm going to give you. Look. I gotta do my job and be a good bank clerk, you know. I, I can't let you have any of the money that's in the safe. Muttering to himself. Even if it is only $100. What was that? Oh, nothing. Why don't you... Have a seat. Gestures to chair in front of the desk. Joe sits down and puts the fake gun on the ground next to him. Hey, I've been waiting to deposit this check for like an hour. Well, you're gonna have to wait a little longer, ma'am. Sarcastically. We have more important things to deal with. Fine. But the sooner the police come to arrest this jackass, the better. Yeah. Not <laughs> Whatever, lady. To Joe. What's your name, kid? It's Joe Smith. Not a very original name now, is it? <laughs> now, why on earth would you want to do such a stupid thing as robbing a bank? Well, I've always had... Wait, wait, wait. Hold that thought. It takes a moment to try to remember something. I, I can't believe it. I... I... Totally forgot to call the police. I, you came in here all like, put him up. And I was all like, whoa, you scared me. And you were all like, hey, guess what? I suck at being a bank robber. And I was all like, yeah, you do. Have a seat. And, and during all that commotion, I forgot to call the police. How unprofessional of me. Excuse me for a second. Turns away to talk on the phone. Conversation isn't heard by audience. To Pauline. Hey, uh, look, I'm sorry. I don't for care. <laughs> But I said I don't care. All I want to do is sit here and read my magazine until the police come and arrest you and lock you up for the rest of your life. Because the real problem in this world is people like you who just do stupid things and serve no other purpose than to waste the time of honorable citizens like me. <laughs> I hope you get shanked in prison. <laughs> coming, coming back from phone, clasps hands. All righty. The police will be here in the next five minutes or so. And where was I? Oh, yeah. Why on earth would you want to do a stupid thing like robbing a bank? Well, for the past several years, my life has been boring. I didn't have many friends in high school or college, and I never went to any fun parties. I took boring classes in college, and that led me to getting a boring desk job where I literally do nothing exciting. The girlfriend I had in college dumped me because she said I would, she would rather watch paint dry. <laughs> And then she said she's transferring schools because of me. I want to see my family, but even they think I'm too boring to be around. I just, I wanted to add a little bit of excitement to my life. So I figured the best way to do that would be to rob this small bank with a gun that I thought was real. I thought that it would sort of give me something to be remembered for, you know? Oh, sorry. What was that? I, I was kind of... 
zoned out for a second after, <laughs> after you started talking. This is my final push. If I wasn't successful, I told myself I would end it all. No one would miss me anyway. You got that right. <laughs> no, 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 no. Don't listen to this old hag. I'm sure that there's something interesting about you. What do you do for fun? Uh, some. Sometimes I read a newspaper. Wow, okay, you really are boring. <laughs> but just being boring isn't, re isn't a reason for someone to commit suicide. I know, I know, it sounds like a stupid reason, but I just don't see my life getting any better or more interesting from here. I just feel like I don't... Have a purpose? <laughs> yeah, what she said. Well... If you didn't have a purpose in this world, then God wouldn't have put you on the earth, would he? I don't believe in God, though. Neither do I. But that mindset at least helps me get through the days when I feel like I'm not doing anything purposeful with my life. And it sounds like that's every day for you. Right, John? Joe. What? Never mind. Look, guy, I really do feel bad for you. I would give you some money to help out your cause, but I'm already thin on ice I'm already on thin ice with my boss after a whole incident involving another coworker and some actual thin ice. So, unfortunately, Run. please, oh. go for it. just don't let me go to prison. Please, there are big scary guys there with tattoos and scars and... Don't forget about the homemade shanks. That'll be your favorite part, I'm sure. Listen, buddy, you may be mind-numbingly boring, but you're not eight, so let go of my leg. Let's go of Brett's leg and sulks back into his seat. He wipes away tears and blows his nose on his shirt. I'm sorry, that was uncalled for. Hey, at least you showed some emotion. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, what was that? Ma'am? I said, I hope he takes a step in the right direction, which is off a cliff. What are you, deaf? <sighs> First of all, that wasn't even clever. And second of all, you have no right to treat him like that. The whole time that he has been here, you've only said mean and hateful things towards him. What did Jeff ever do to you that made you so mad? My name's Joe, actually. I'll tell you why I'm so angry. All throughout school, I had to deal with goobers like him. I was constantly picking spitballs out of my hair and cleaning mud that was thrown on me off my dress. These kids never did anything except annoy people and cause trouble. And like you and your fake guns, I know when I see one. This jackass is one of those kids. I was actually pretty quiet and... I made it my life goal never to have to interact with another one of your kind. I was doing quite well until I got stuck in this stupid bank with a stupid bank clerk and a stupid kid who was doing a god-awful job at robbing it. Come on, lady, you're being childish. No, I'm not the one being childish. You're being childish by giving this waste of space encouragement that is obviously going to be lost on him because he is undoubtedly going to die alone. She walks over, picks up the fake, gu fake gun, and points it at Joe's head. I wish this thing was real so I could put you out of your misery myself. At this moment, policeman bursts through the door holding a gun in handcuffs. Finally, it took you long enough. Drop the gun and put your hands over your head, lady. Wait, no, I'm not. She looks to Brett to back her up. Policemen look at him, too. There's a long pause as they wait for Brett to say something, dramatically pretending to be scared. Oh, Mr. Policeman, please, take her away. She came in here all like, grrr, put him up. And I was all like, please, don't hurt me. And she was all like, I'm not afraid to shoot. And, and at that point, I just about beat myself. I, I've never been so scared before in my whole life. But thank goodness that this man happened to be in the bank. He was able to distract her long enough for long enough until you arrived. Without his heroics, my brain would be splattered across the wall behind me. Gives Joe a nudge. Yeah, I was just doing my job, I guess. <laughs> it's men like you who make me proud to go to work every day. She then handcuffs Pauline. As for you, lady, you're coming with me. Starts to drag Pauline out of the bank. Pauline is flailing around, trying to get away. No, you got the wrong person. Both of these idiots are liars. You're all going to rot in hell. This gun isn't even real. You're not fooling anyone, lady. I know a real gun when I see one. Pauline, <laughs> Pauline and policeman exit. There's a moment of silence, and then Joe runs over to Brett, gives him a big hug, and doesn't let go. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem, buddy. Pats Joe on the head. Hey, you like that little lie I came up with? 
Pretty quick thinking, if you ask me. And plus, now you will get to be remembered for something, like you were wanting earlier. I can see the headlines now. Local bank saved from crazy armed woman by James Schmidt. Let's go with Embrace to look at bread. It's Joe Smith. Huh? Never mind. <laughs> Joe goes back to hugging bread, smiling as the stage lights fade to black. <laughs>